Uh, Nate is here. He's been talking about this all morning. He's very excited. It's time for some science. It certainly is. Live on your ABC News Breakfast this week, I've got a treat for you. She's an author, a former host of the kids' science show Scope on Channel 10 and a science communicator keen on biology and environment, Lee Constable. Welcome to News Breakfast. Hello. Great to be here with this. Yeah, yeah, we, we've got a bit of sciencyness <laughs> going on in the background. It's great. Hey, uh, we have some science news stuff to talk about that is very much out of my realm of comfort. You know, I'm normally weather. You're taking it squishy into biology. Yes. And you're not starting glamorous either. No, no. So I had a look at all the different science news and I ended up coming up with three different animal science stories. Perfect. The first one we're going to talk about is of cane toads and computers. Uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> Classic this, combo. Yeah, it's <laughs> Somebody's made a cane toad simulator. Why on earth would you want to do that? <laughs> so this is actually some local research out of Monash. Mm. They've made a simulation, a program to do with cane toad management. Right. So you want to run your different cane toad management strategies through the program before you roll them out to see what will be most effective. Uh, um, what, what are the strategies? There are a lot. I mean, there's the obvious uh, hand catching. Uh -huh. um, everyone's favourite. You can see a hand Ooh. holding one right <laughs> yeah. there. Um, and then there are other things like fencing off water sources, which is, of course, where they need to breed and things mm. like that. There's also um, chemical means. There's pheromones that they can release uh, that actually stop the cane toad tadpole development oh, wow. too. So there's there's all sorts of different strategies out there mm. that people can choose from. And we're talking, you know, rangers, conservationists, community groups. Yeah, so even just uh, people... Because uh, different things hit differently in different parts of the country and are more effective? And also different parts of the life cycle of the cane toad. Right. So it's called vertoad, V-I-R. Oh, look, look at that, perfect timing. timing. <laughs> um, vertoad, and they've actually developed developed it so that you can have a look at your particular region, the landscape, the climate, what you're dealing with, but also, importantly, your resources because yeah. these people doing the management don't always have the budget, the people, the labour required, so you can really test out the pros and cons of everything. Mm. Um, it's going to be available to uh, people working in conservation, but also they're eventually going to make it available like a video game to you and me. Oh, cool. And so everyone can, else. So we can all learn and stop <laughs> smacking our heads against the wall when it comes to trying to figure out cane toads. I know. It takes us to <laughs> woodpecker news. Yes. So from cane toads and computers, we go to uh, birds and brains. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, so woodpeckers have been big in science news over the last week. Uh, we've... We know that they are headbangers, you know, yeah. they're pecking away at the wood to try and get at bugs. Um, one thing that scientists were interested in is how they don't get brain damage from yeah, that. Yeah, because we see sports people just taking one hit oh, yeah, on the sports field yeah. and they're concussed. And yes. this, this lot do it a heck of a lot really quickly, yes. pretty much all the time. So you can see this slow-mo footage. These scientists actually looked at three different species of woodpecker and they tracked different parts of their head near their eye and near where the beak meets, meets their head. Mm. And they looked at what actually happens as they peck the wood. They thought that potentially there'd be some cushioning effect on the brain, um, but turns out no. Uh, really? they're, they're acting more oh. like a bird uh, hammer <laughs> or, yeah. or pickaxe. Um, there is no cushioning, there's no give. And so this actually um, puzzled scientists. Mm. Um, but when they did the calculation, so for a human concussion, um, you know, maybe for a more mild one, you're thinking about 100 um, Gs of force. Um, when they looked at how hard they'd have to hit the wood to be, you know, at the same level as we would to get a concussion, they found that because the woodpecker's brain is about a seventh of the length of our brain, mm. they can actually take seven times more force. Oh, wow. So, so small yeah. brain, you're doing better. So yeah. all those people taking hits on the football field, <laughs> if they're... Well, no, I'm, avoid I'm them <laughs> at all costs. Yeah. Well, it means all the people that have concussions have massive, huge brains. Um, yeah. Let's, lastly, quickly, because we're uh, almost out of time, we're going to take it majestic. You've done uh, gross uh, on the land. We've done air birds. Let's go to the oceans. And, and a go big story, please. Like, the biggest. The biggest. Like, maybe the biggest animal, the blue whale. That'll do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, 
We, we know and it's well documented that whales are impacted in different ways from industrial noise, from mm -hmm. shipping, um, particularly from oil and gas exploration because there's these big seismic air guns that they're actually firing every 10 to 15 seconds oh. with 250 decibels. Um, a, a pressure travels through water yeah. so much better than air Going as well, like sound. all the way through mm. to the surface of the floor and below to yeah. find out what's down there. Now, one thing scientists want to know is, are they phased by earthquakes? Um, ah, another big pressure way of going through the water. Yeah, so they looked at a population of blue whales uh, out near Aotearoa, New Zealand. So the South Taranaki um, Bight is where there's a population of blue whales that are used to industrial noise, but also there's a lot of earthquakes. Mm -hmm. After looking at 32 different earthquakes and they had this acoustic equipment out there recording the blue whales, the conclusion is, I don't know if they use this word, but not phased. Yeah? Not so, phased so, by the earthquakes. So it's not the natural the, like, loud noises, yep. but the people's version, and, and that's changing their songs, right? Yeah, so there are examples where it changes how they communicate about foraging, about food, about mating. Um, yeah. You know, it really has a huge impact, these noises. But uh, the good thing is that earthquakes, um, they may have evolved to deal with these sorts of sporadic, natural, mm. big booms, um, which is which is good news because we have less control over earthquakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Despite so what cool. the conspiracy theorists say. Good to know that maybe, you know, we need to be paying attention to what we're doing in the ocean yeah. to try to, hey, like, save the whole stinking planet, like uh, your you book. Should actually, say yeah, that. You should check it out because it is, it is a great book. Lee, thank you so much for joining us. That's the How to Save the Whole Stinking Planet. I uh, hope to have another nerdy science chat with you very soon. Thank you. Team, uh, there you go. A bit of everything. Lee's taken us right through the globe.